Hi, today I'm going to talk about the number and positioning of points for constructing a realistic head that I can use uh, with a head turn. And specifically, I'm going to uh, choose to, my, my technique is used so that I can do both the side to side head turn and the up and down head turn, but I'm just going to show side to side today. And in this situation, I'm only going to show, I'm only talking about the outline of the head, so we're uh, not using the nose of the facial or the facial features. Because those can be thought of as uh, layers that are on top of the head. To construct the face, we'll use 21 points. The main points are in red, at the top of the head, and at the indentation at the center of the eye at the corner of the jaw and at the chin. You may want to notice the kind of features that we're uh, marking is the brow ridge, the cheek, the base of the nose, and that's actually where the cheek comes together, and then here is where the mouth, the lips, the center of the mouth would be. And this, uh, these purple points are just kind of a curve for the jaw, allow you to have a curve one way or the other. So for the number of points, we'll have three at the top of the head, and then around the eye and the cheek, we have four points. That's why we're showing yellow here. And around the mouth to the corner of the jaw, we have three points. And then two points on either side for the chin. So a key point about this technique is we want to mark the prominent features of the face, especially as it turns left and right, and we want the points to have very little vertical movement. In other words, as we uh, go from a front view to a side view, we want the points to only move horizontally. This reduces distortion when you combine left and right movement with up and down movement. So as we go from the front view to the three-quarter view, as you see, the point should be really um, moving very little vertically. And yet I do see prominent features like even the mouth starting to pucker out, the cheek coming out and the eye indentation, and a little bit of the chin coming in from the, underneath the mouth. And I can all go all the way to the side view as well. And you'll notice that we even see the base of the jaw here. and. Even when we form the back of the skull, we try to keep the points in the same vertical location, even though we, so we would change the curvature to get the right appearance, appearance there. Um, you'll notice also, though, in the very side view, that the two chin points come together. Two other things that you may want to notice um, in this side view is the neck uh, is extends up fairly high, so that when you do the rotation it will uh, not be exposed. And then the other part is that uh, for the chin, as we move to the side view, the chin kind of comes down so we have a little uh, piece that shows that part. And in the front view, uh, let's see, we have the chin showing underneath. So anyway, that's the technique I use to construct the face. Uh, another interesting point is that um, these are not unique to a particular face, they're just marking the prominent features of a face, and so it could be for a chibi face or uh, a young uh, person, a male or female, an older person, and you just need to move those points uh, relative to that head, but you keep that same structure, and that's the technique I use. I uh, hope that's uh, helpful, I hope you enjoy it.